170 cubic centimeters, uh, and males have uh, 1,473 or 74 rounded. So males appear to have at least numerically differences. Standard deviations are different as well. 161 for males, 123 for females, and the homogeneity of variance assumption is going to be tested here. And in fact, it's tested in the Levine's test of equality of air variance, and it's not statistically significant. But it's, you know, it's not really close, but it's close ish. Uh, but it's not statistically significant, so we're going to assume uh, that the variances between the two groups are homogeneous, they're the same fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now here we've got the test of between subjects effects. We've got uh, corrected model intercept. You can ignore that I think in most cases. And here we have our main effect of sex. And it's got an F value of 50.91 and it's statistically significant at p less than 0 0.001. And it's got an eta squared of 0.342. So that means that um, 34 percent, approximately 34 percent of the variability in cranial capacity can be accounted for by the, the independent variable which is sex, uh, males and females. So that's pretty big. That's a pretty big difference uh, accounted for, 34 percent of the variability. And then we have the means uh, estimated here again and they're identical to the first uh, set of means here. Now, but it'll be different once we do an analysis of covariance. Alright, so we've done the an, a plain ordinary ANOVA and we found that cranial capacity does appear to differ between males and females in a statistically significant way and it accounts for a pretty hefty effect size of 34% 34, 34 of the variability. Uh, but the question, the real question is, alright, well so what? Maybe all we're testing here is that males are bigger uh, in general, they're just bigger bodied, so they have bigger uh, heads, they have be bigger cranial capacities. So to do the uh, analysis of covariance, we need to add the covariate. Uh, now, in this case, the covariate, which I think is kind of an interesting problem, uh, and it, these are real data, so this is a real problem, uh, this is how data end up in, in reality, is that we've got three candidates for body size. And it's not a very parsimonious way to deal with it. And it's not a very theoretically congruent or coherent way to deal with body size because none of these in themselves, body height, wrist size, and weight, are true indicators of um, body size. But they all indicate it in, a, in, a, in some way. So the best way to deal with this, in my opinion, uh, is to reduce the data into a composite. Now I want a really simple and arguably uh, ineffective way would be to simply sum these three variables and then get a composite score. So you'd literally add 143 plus 45 plus 59.5 and that person would get a composite body score. And everyone would get one by adding the three variables together. A more sophisticated way is to reduce the data using a dimension reduction technique such as principal uh, components analysis. Now the variables are in here because I've already done the analysis, but this is what it would look like uh, for you if you had your own data set. So uh, that's my independent variable, this is my dependent variable, and these are my candidate covariates. What I want to do is reduce these three variables uh, because my hypothesis is that they're correlated positively together, so someone with a larger body height uh, will have larger wrist size and they'll have larger weight. And that's going to produce uh, a general factor, a general body size factor. And I'm talking about factors, but what I'm going to extract is in fact a component. Uh, and there are advantages to components versus factors. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this in, in this tutorial. Uh, safe to say that component scores at least are determinate rather than indeterminate. Uh, so in some sense they're, they're better and uh, they have their advantages. And in this case I think principal components analysis is probably the best way to go, particularly because I have a really small sample size of only about 100. So I'm going to fix my number of factors to one because I just want a one general factor component of body size. So I'm going to click continue. Now I'm going to extract, um, sorry, I'm going to get some scores here. And this is the main point of this. Actually, before I continue, I also want the correlation matrix. Okay, because uh, I want to show you that there actually is a, a, a positive manifold. There's a positive correlation amongst all the variables. Now, I also want the scores, and this is the main reason I'm doing this, is that I want to extract component scores that will be a parsimonious and um, theoretically relevant body size variable 
to represent body size for each uh, person in the data set. So you click on Save, 